happens if you have not followed his Triple H Horse Racing Podcast. You're missing out. It's one of the best podcasts in the country. Hello and welcome to a taped episode of the HHH Racing Podcast, episode 313, as we are covering opening night at Turfway Park in Florence, Kentucky, and the late pick five with all full fields. That's right. Full fields of 12, 60 horses plus entered in late pick five at Turfway Park this Wednesday, November 29th. Thanks for joining the show. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button on the bottom right hand side of the screen. Hit the notification bell so that you know when new content will arise and smash that like button as well. You can reach me on Twitter at H Kravitz on the name tag and scrolling at the bottom of the screen, H Kravitz horse at Gmail. Dot com. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. The Power Picks. Wow, did we have a week last weekend? Two wins, two seconds, some vertical plays, including my top pick, Intricate, winning the Philly two-year-old race at Churchill Downs at, I believe, 6-1. to one. Fantastic score for all of you out there who subscribe to the Power Picks tip sheet. Of course, you can go to our website, HHH Racing Podcast. Dot com as well and follow us on instagram there it is on the bottom of the screen instagram.com backslash hhh racing podcast tonight i've got two wonderful co-hosts two young men who've been absolutely rocking it out on benton and booze and to join me tonight to hopefully crush this late pick five at turfway park let them bring let me bring them on right now first from the university of of Kentucky and the OC, Orange County, California, Mr. Noah Maher, and from the Ohio State University trying to recover from this past weekend's game, which we're not going to talk about, Mr. Charlie Freeman. Guys, how are we doing tonight? Good. Been better, been better, but we're moving through it. I hear you, Charlie, also a Saints fan and uh, Bears fan. As we're taping this right now, they are uh, winning 3 nothing, Charlie. So maybe something good will uh, come out of that. Now. Noah, real quick before we talk about Turfway, uh, young man, I don't know what's going on with you and Del Mar, but uh, again, crushing a pick six with a friend of yours and your father. Congrats on that nice score. What was it, a week and a half ago, I believe now, right? Yeah, it was uh... – no, it was Thanksgiving Day, actually. Thanksgiving um, Day, yeah. Yeah, they had the the uh, pick six carryover that you and Kyle covered. Um, I was lucky enough to, you know, be able to hit that with uh, my dad and and one of my buddies. Uh, we pitched in and played a two hundred eighty eight dollar mm-hmm. ticket. Um, and with you know mm-hmm. the the pick six and the five out of sixes, it ended up being close to twelve grand. So that was a that was a pretty good Thanksgiving and early Christmas for sure. No problem. Easy game. And Charlie, as I told you before the show, I know you're a big Gulfstream guy. Their turf is opening finally on beautiful turf course starting this Friday. So, Charlie, I know you'll be diving in to some Wesley Ward horses for sure down at Gulfstream. Their championship meeting uh, officially starts this Friday and their new turf course opens up also. Yeah, certainly very excited about that. I know you and I have touched on how uh, once I go down to Florida for winter break, uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you there for some good racing. But uh, yeah, you know, ever since Arlington's been gone, Gulfstream sort of become my home away from home when I visit Earl. Love to, you know, see the Wesley Ward horses there as well. And uh, yeah, certainly yep. excited for Gulfstream to be back. Yep, I'll be down there uh, right before New Year's and uh, with Charlie. And actually, um, uh, Tony Rollo from Crownsway Racing is going to be there also as well, Charlie. And uh, you and I are going to be are going to hit Palm Meadows uh, training track. Maybe we'll see a Todd and a Chad and we'll, we'll talk later in the morning. If you can get up early enough, I think you can get up for that. Right, Charlie. I can make it happen. I can All try. Right. I mean, I'm a college student. We've, we've gotten up early for game days. It wouldn't be something new. Oh, listen, when, when you see the horse flush down there, it'll be worth it. Well, guys, let's, we're going to go talk about Turfway tonight. I talked about Turfway Park opening with Kevin Kirstein last week as a Churchill Downs Incorporated owned track. The field sizes are tremendous. In fact, on Wednesday night, guys, we're filming this on Monday night uh, for those of you, depending on when you're going to be watching this. Uh, every race, guys, has, is, is 12 horses plus some AEs. Incredible. So if you're worried about field size at Turfway, uh, don't because it's going to be fantastic. And guys, this Wednesday night's very interesting races because we've got some nice races and some 
Eh, not exactly high quality, but let's uh, we'll jump in and talk about that, guys. So let's go ahead and start talking about the late pick five opening night Wednesday Turfway Park. Again, they're on the tapita, of course. Let's jump in. It starts with a two-year-old main special weight for for the girls, guys, going one mile. It's a seventy thousand dollar purse. You see, it's a big field. I'm going to say it over and over again. Field of twelve. There's also an also eligible and Tony Blue Tape. If she gets in, obviously is the threat at four to one for Maker. We'll assume that she doesn't get in. Let me go ahead and bring up the banners at the bottom of the screen for our top picks. It's a it's a it's a difficult sequence. There it is, uh, right there, and you can see that uh, Noah is going with the nine. Charlie's going with the three. So let's go ahead and jump uh, right in. Noah and have you start first. You're going with the nine butterfly queen for the other maker that's in here and Ramos, who's one of his go-to guys at Turfway Park. What do you like about this one? Yeah, I definitely agree with you uh, on, on Ramos and him being, you know, one of his go-to guys here at Turfway. Um, the thing that kind of stuck out to me uh, was the race two back, uh, her career debut. Uh, she kind of got stuck down on the rail uh, and the public really liked her that day. She was, you know, less than four to one. Uh, and then uh, came back and went a mile on the turf at Keeneland. Uh, looked like a pretty decent race. Uh, saved some ground, but ultimately thought uh, she showed quite enough, you know, to, to contend with this field. Yeah, Butterfly Queen is definitely a factor. I, I have her third. I have a little bit of an opinion on her, but I'll wait and let uh, Charlie talk about his top choice. Charlie's going with the three. This is a horse I looked at very quickly. Uh, so carefully, excuse me, sedately, who hopefully will not be sleepy for Wesley Ward on uh, Wednesday night. I know you're a big fan of Wesley Ward, Charlie. The source didn't do a lot of running, but it was a pretty tough field. Obviously, you think she's going to improve. I think I'm going to show that replay uh, because there's a few horses coming out of that race. I bring you guys on the screen here. So I'm going to go ahead and show the replay as you talk about it. Uh, sedately is the – actually – Tony Blue Tape is the one, and that's the also all eligible guy. So if the also eligible gets in, Tony Blue Tape is the one. Sedately is the nine. I'm just going to go right to the stretch, Charlie, and you can tell me what you think here. Um, again, the AEs on the lead, and the nine was just pretty far back the whole way, made a little bit of run in the stretch. Yes, you know, as it touches on in the comments, uh, the horse had a slight hop at the start. It was also the debut. As you touched on, I mean, it was certainly a tough field, in my opinion, probably one of the tougher fields compared to any other horse in this race. And, you know, the horse that finished second, Egyptian Candy, I believe is a horse we're going to be yep. talking about later yep. uh, later on in the card, who I think is a very strong horse, which, again, I'll touch on my picks later. And, I mean, look, you can see the horse showing some interest. I think the reality is the hop start didn't help. And, uh, sedately, honestly, just wasn't close enough to really show a chance to be competitive. But I think with a cleaner start, uh, you know, certainly when it's a Wesley Ward second time out, you have to be aware. Um, and I think that's also an easier field. And I just think, again, the horse also, which, you know, we've talked on a bunch on Benton and Booze, and since I'm kind of the person who's always looked at whenever there's a Wesley Ward horse, he always has his horses working forwardly. So that's usually a big red flag is if you see a Wesley Ward horse that doesn't have any sharp works, you should kind of be concerned. And uh, a lot of the time it proves true and those horses don't end up firing. Uh, and you can see the four. 48 and one last time out, which for me is a big deal because it shows today Lee is working forward, which is again what you sort of expect with a Wesley Ward horse. I'm hoping that she can take the step forward second time out, which is something we see all the time with horses in their second start. Get sit a nice stalking trip. I think the distance will certainly be reasonable for sedately. And again, just stay close enough to be able to actually show a light kick uh that actually matters. I wanted to freeze it right here, Charlie, because again, this four horse everyone we're gonna talk about in the last race of of today's show. So just remember the Egyptian horse is right here. The one who's the AE is in this yellow who might get in this race. And then here is the nine uh, sedately. So yeah, I, I, you know, she made, a, she made a little bit of run. I expected a little more from her guys. I just thought this was a really tough race in general. And I'm going with a horse that I admit's a little bit of a fuzzy. Although Charlie, you've got this horse third. I'm going to go with Everland. Now Everland, um, Jonathan Thomas, we know how good, she is guys this is an arrogant and when you watch the last race i really thought it was interesting and we're not going to show replays in every race but i want everyone to watch the last race especially uh everland here is the eight and what i found interesting here guys is she was up relative you see where she is right here 
She's up relatively close, like in between horses. The horse on the outside of her, guys, makes an early move, and she gets way shuffled back. I don't, they just accelerated. Watch what happened to the eight. Like she was up close, and then I don't know if she, they just, I mean, look at this. Like right now, you're like, Howard, why do you like this horse at all? She gets shuffled back, like all the way to last almost, guys. I don't know if the jockey was just caught off guard. Like what the hell happened there? I don't know. But then. And again, you might be saying, Howard, this horse is no good. Okay, now she's like four or five wide, and guys, she's making up ground. So it just felt like the jock just sort of lost track of what was going on. And guys, she's in the five path here, and I, I thought she stayed on pretty well. And remember, she was up much closer before she got drug all the way back to last. So this was sort of a weird race. It's a Z. It's called a Z pattern where they're up close, backs up and comes out again. Guys, I thought that was a pretty good effort. I mean, all considering, that was definitely a replay special for me. I don't know what you guys thought, but I thought that was a very bizarre kind of run right there. If she had kept her uh, composure and just was able to stay there, um, she's got blinkers on. Maybe that was a part of the problem. She's been working well at Turfway. I think this horse is fascinating. The other horse I've got is Viable, who is going to the turf. This is a war front. This is a curl in out of a war front dam. Guys, there's a lot of question marks in this race, but, you know, I respect your two choices, the three and the nine. It's a wide open race. Quick thoughts, Charlie, on anything you saw between my we replay and the 12, maybe the 10 and anything else. Yeah, you know, again, with the 12, as you kind of touched on, what I liked is, I mean, obviously on the debut, having to run at a maiden special weight of 157,000 is a huge step up compared to these horses. So for me, that was one where I was able to put a line through. And as you kind of touched on, similar to this last race, showed a nice setup, you know, was a few lengths off the lead and then ultimately didn't have enough. Then goes to a little more reasonable competition, seems to be trying to run that same race. And exactly as you touched on, all of a sudden after kind of getting that similar trip and maybe looking like the horse who wasn't even being asked could make a strong run, then all of a sudden, again, whether it was, you know, the jockey caught, got caught off guard or maybe the horse got, you know, still only the second time out, got a little unsettled by the other horses getting ready to yeah. go and didn't know what to do. And like you mentioned, a lot of times what you'll see with these younger horses with less experiences, they can kind of retreat back like that and then they can't get them back onto terms. So for me, the big thing is whether it was a jockey mistake or not, I liked, as you touched on, that Everland wasn't discouraged and was willing to get back on terms. And I get the horse got third, but really just missed second. And the fact that the horse is able to do that going five wide certainly interests me. And again, for me, this is a, way, a race that's wide open. If you were betting the race, you know, more vertically than horizontally, certainly like the value more at six to one. Um, and the only other horse I will touch on is foreseen the seven for me is another interesting one, which kind of a common theme that you're seeing for these horses is just being too far behind. You see this horse was what? 13 lengths off the lead and dead yeah. last nowhere and then closed all the way up to within four lengths. Uh, for me, I just like to see that kind of interest. And again, just maybe another one of those horses where uh, if foreseen can get, you know, a cleaner break and can stay closer on and not be way too far out of it. Certainly yeah. uh, with that step forward last time out could be competitive again, nice value in a race that's wide open. Uh, I will. And, and knowing Charlie, I'm not going to disagree with you all night long. Trust me, but I do want to point out a few things. This horse was 32 to one in that race and it was a very fast pace. Although the horse did close well and it's an uncle Mo. So the horse has a right to improve real quick on sweet sh on sunshine. Noah, I didn't really know what to do with this horse. Uh, this is the race, and I don't know if you were there that day or not. I can't recall, Noah. But this is the race where an 88-1 to one shot won the race. I'm sure you watched the replay. Uh, I mean, the horse was up close, but really folded pretty badly. Does take blinks off. It is Godolphin and Cox. I have concerns about this jock. I don't know if this is a jock that they're going to be using a lot. There are a lot of questions here, but maybe the blinks off and second time is going to help this horse a lot. No, you're uh, muted, by the way. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was kind of what I was keying in on. Um, you know, Brad Cox, second time out, you know, he, he can definitely be deadly. Um, Concepcion is uh, an apprentice, I think, just won his first race uh, at Churchill either last week or a couple weeks ago. Uh, okay. so he's, he's kind of an up and comer. Uh, and like you said, I was going to point out, you know, you'd have that 88 to one winner. So you, you never really know. The, the race is kind of a fuzzy. Yeah. Uh, but just, you know, Cox second off, a horse that's shown speed uh, and light, uh, thought I'd give give her a shot. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a huge spread race, at least for me personally, guys. Let's go on to the next race. The next race, oh boy. Now listen, Turfway, guys, is going to have a lot of really high-quality races uh, and some high-quality horses, including, by the way, quick shout-out 
to a horse called Magistrate, who my brother and I own a pretty good piece of, actually, who's running at Turfway Park this Saturday in a $70,000 main special weight uh, for two uh, for three-year-olds and up. He got a 75 buyer last time. He's the four horse, I believe. Magistrate race five Saturday night. If you're a fan of uh, of the show, of course, if you're watching this, you are. Cheer on Magistrate Saturday night race five. The four horse. We don't have odds yet. But he got a 75 buyer, guys. First time out of Laurel. Anyway, this race is not main special. In fact, it's the opposite. This is a maiden five claimer. That's right. You heard that. Not only is this a maiden five claimer, Charlie... Who's your top pick in this race, and who trains a first-time starter in a maiden five claimer? <laughs> yeah, first time Lasix, Wesley Ward, Redneck Agenda. You know, the, he's bringing out the big guns. You know, this is one of Wesley's <laughs> best horses on the planet, apparently. This one's going to be going to Ascot. No, but, you know, as a certainly, you know, a 5,000 claim five-year-old debut for Wesley Ward is not something you'll find every day. Uh, you know, this kind of reminds me of those Arlington specials I would see back in the day. For me, seeing a 5,000 claim like this is the usual. Uh, but yeah, you know, for me, this race, I get people might think, oh, this is the Wesley Ward bias. But as I was talking about before we went on air, for me, it's this simple. Wesley Ward is known for having his horses, as I talked about earlier, with the three horse working forwardly. And despite the fact that, yes, this is a five-year-old debut, the horse worked like the three, a 48 and one last time out, which for me is a big green flag because Wesley, like I said, he likes his horses working forwardly. So if you see one where the times aren't there, it's usually a big red flag. So I like to see that. And again, for me, this is a race where I like to make my analogy as a college student right now where there's some tests where you know the answer right away and you circle it and there's other tests where you look at it and you're scratching out all the wrong answers to see who's left and that's what kind of happened here i also think it's only also interesting that wesley owns this horse as well which is not something you see all that often is that he you know the breeder the trainer and the owner is all wesley ward yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, again, the horse is working decently. Uh, a lot of these horses that have performed, I mean, you're seeing fours, zeros, nines, elevens, twelves for the speed figures, certain, or yeah, you know, for the buyer, certainly not great figures. Uh, so for me, I feel like this is a great race to pick a first time starter and why not go with the Wesley Ward? Yeah. I mean, look, th this is not, ex this is a very hungry bunch. I was looking for the buyer par, which actually I think it's off the screen, but the horse actually is bred pretty well. One Hot Wish was a very fast horse. You can see here's the PPs for the dam. One Hot Wish who um, raced on the Sin, although not very well. Actually, won very well at Keeneland. Guys, you see these fractions in, in her debut back in oh April God. 2007? <laughs> 21 and 2 and 43. I believe that's still a track record, by the way, guys. This is 48 and 4 fifths. I think that's still a track record at Keeneland. No one's shaking his head. Yes, I don't know. I haven't. I I can look that up. But um, anyway, this horse obviously is not that. Um, Charlie, you know Wesley Ward actually personally. The fact that he owns the horse and he's in for five. It. I mean, again, there's not a lot of places to go here. This horse is going to go to the lead for X amount of time, and and just obviously he doesn't think highly of the horse, right? I mean, obviously. Yeah. But you also can say, you know, with races this week, you know, we've talked about this on plenty of episodes that we've covered on Better and Booze. And as you know, sometimes when you have races this week, it is good to be the speed horse because you could just have horses no, that no flat out can't pass. And it no, could no. 100% be one of those races where you're right. The fractions aren't going to be like the horses this horse has come from where you're going to see track records. Yeah. But it, you don't need to have a track record figure to beat this field. She, she might be wheezing in the final 16th, but she <laughs> might get there anyway. But they all uh, might no, be tired you're anyway. Go yeah. to two. You're going to go with the two, Louis, who had a whopping 25 buyer first time out at, at, at Belterra Park, closed into strong fractions and finished third. Uh, improvement second time out, very likely. It is a drop down on paper, but I'm not sure how much of a drop it really is uh, going from, you know, Belterra main special to, you know, open five claimer at Turfway. I, I, I would say it's definitely a drop, though. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, it's just... You know, you, you get to these kind of races uh, and you, you try not to get cute. You just kind of, you know, eliminate the horses that you, you know, can't win. Um, and this is a horse that, you know, we've kind of seen what the other horses can do. Uh, and this one is a little bit of a fuzzy. You don't know, you know, what this horse is able to do. Uh, just the fact that, uh, you know, was favored uh, in the career debut. Yeah. Uh, and the winner came back to win, um, you know. Cowens has got some great numbers uh, on the drop and second time out. Uh, and he's got a decent number, you know, off that long of a layoff. 
so you know uh with you know horses that i weren't sure about this is this is one that you know maybe could pop a number yeah i'm gonna use her i don't like the fact she's been off since may though if, if this horse had just run like three weeks ago, I would have liked her a lot more, Noah. So the fact that she was off this long and then they're dropping in for five is like, I don't know. She's probably got issues. But look, they've all got issues, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be in this spot. I'm going with the 10, guys. I have n absolutely no idea whatsoever. By the way, Abel Cedillo, your California guy, Noah, mm -hmm. is, is riding at, uh, at Turfway this winter. I, I have luck. The horse is already at 13 starts. She's been off since September. But there's numbers in here that would destroy this field, guys. And if she's ready, she's got blinkers off. If she's ready at all, she'll, what, sit off the seven or maybe be quicker than the seven and hopefully hang around. It's not a very creative opinion, guys, but I'm going to Beautiful Temple here in this race to beat uh, the first-time starter, Wesley. I looked at the 11 a little bit as a total bomb here, guys. Casino Annie, maybe she's improving. Maybe I like turnbacks. She's been training also at Turfway Park, guys, or she actually only has one uh, work in, in a while, but I don't know, guys. If the race, like, falls apart, I thought the 11 maybe is the one to pick up the pieces, although I would say the two is also likely to pick up the pieces. To me, you don't have to go very deep on this race, no. I mean, you got to take stands somewhere. I certainly couldn't single anyone, but it, it, on paper, it doesn't look like you have to go very deep in leg two. Yeah, that's pretty much kind of my theory um yeah i only went too deep as you'll i'll see in my pick five uh okay. and i'm gonna i'm gonna try and beat the ward uh so you know yeah these these kind of races uh especially here at, at turfway you, you know you're gonna get some prices and uh, you're gonna have to pick your spots as well i agree let's go on to the third leg guys race seven you'll see our picks there at the bottom of the screen guys we are very different in this race Char noah and charlie are thinking alike though they both have the one on top. I'm going to I'm gonna tell you guys, I've got like five or six horses written down in my ABCs. I don't have the one anywhere. Um, so I'm either going to be way wrong, and you guys are going to be very right, or vice versa. We're going to see. But let's take a look at the field here. This is a, an eight down to seven claimer. They're going a mile and a 16th, of course, on the uh, tapita here. Uh, purse is pretty low, but they, they have nice purses all year, uh, all winter. But this one's actually 23,000. It's not that bad considering. It's a big field of, of 12, of course. There's two AEs. You guys are going to both go with the New York Brad, the number one Supreme Song, who's 5-1 to one morning line for Smith and Perry Oots. Now, I, I don't know how much uh, – you guys are extremely knowledgeable, obviously, with horse racing, but – you guys are a bit younger. Do you guys know who Perry Oots is, the jockey of this one? Because it's really quite interesting. I figured you guys didn't know. People at home right now are sort of chuckling, not making fun of you guys, but just understanding the age situation here. So Perry Oots, guys, the jockey of the one. Are you ready? He is 69 years old. He is 69 wow. years old. He's still riding. He is, I believe, seventh or sixth all-time leading rider in the history of North American races, by the way. He's been around, obviously, forever. And he can still ride. He can still ride. And he can still win some races on these smaller circuits. So, guys, Perry Oots, you've got a 69-year-old jock riding the one. You want to change your pick, either one of you? I love yeah. veteran experience. I love a veteran, veteran experience. Oh, he's got experience. He's got experience. <laughs> no, I don't let you talk. That's, by the way, that's not why I don't like the one, just for the record. I, I don't, I'm not going to rip into ageism because, look, I'm not the youngest guy out there either. So, anyway, uh, I'm, no, I'm going to let you first talk about the number one Supreme song uh, with, again, uh, Perry Oots. Great to see this guy still riding. It's really, in all seriousness, it's, it's absolutely incredible that this guy is still riding, and he still rides at a, at a fairly high level. Uh, especially considering his age. What do you like about this one? Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of give my two cents because I know Charlie's got uh, him on top two. Um, just with this field in general, I, there were a lot of, you know, six, seven, eight-year-olds. Uh, and this seems like, you know, an improving three-year-old. We always talk about the back-to-back uh, -back buyer tops, uh, you know, should should show some improvement. And I just like the fact, uh, you know, the form lines, you see a lot of italicized. So horses are, you know, coming back to win. Um, and you, you got Perry Utes, who you just talked about, uh, and Larry Smith, who is a guy who's doing pretty well himself, uh, especially in, in claiming races. Um, so I, I, you know, this isn't my spread race for me, but this is who I, I landed on on top. This horse is very logical. I'll give reasons why I don't like him, but again, 
he is logical and I could be very wrong. I'm just sort of taking a stand. Charlie, anything quickly you like to talk about the one and then we'll talk about the 12 who none of us also have. This is a, a very interesting race. Uh, talk about the one quick and then we'll go to the 12. Yeah, I mean, again, for me, this is my spread race. It makes sense that there's a bunch of horses you see kind of in that seven to two to six to one range. Uh, again, as Noah touched on, you know, the seeing the former winners this horse has run against the back to back strong buyer. I also like, again, less experience than a lot of these other horses in a good way, where the horse seems to be a younger, improving horse, which for me is, again, a green flag, working forwardly. And again, you know, the efforts have been pretty solid. Second by three fourths of a length, wins by seven, second by two and a half. So has been running around this level and has actually been consistently performing and i talk about him betting and boozing all the time how important consistency is for me so for me supreme song just again had the most green flags and i like that it's a younger horse as well even though you do have an older jockey i kind of like that combo you gotta have a little bit of uh, you know agent experience somewhere <laughs> i will say i didn't really take the three old thing into account i i do agree with you guys that, that this horse still has upside and by the way has a work over the local work over the strip as well there on november 10th uh the 12 is a horse you've interested in charlie for a second uh, Joker on Jack. Now, before we talk about the 12, let me say this. It's a pretty short run into the first turn. And that's my concern about the 12. I have the 12 in the first leg, if you guys remember. It is a pretty short run to the first turn. Um, the, the track, the Tapita pay, plays differently. I'm not, it, it could play well to the outside. We don't, we have no idea yet, but it is a short run to the first turn. It's not ideal, these outside horses, um, even though I do have the 12 in the first leg. You have Joker on Jack, six to one in second in this race, Charlie. Yeah, I will say ahead of time, in case people think it's biased, I genuinely didn't even pick up on uh, until Ward just reading. now that the horse is <laughs> bred by Wesley Ward. No, for me, the angle was simple. The horse is working bullets. Uh, and again, this isn't the strongest field, so it is nice to see. And again, the other thing I like is just, you know, we talk about all the time, you know, uh, horses for courses. Uh, you know, the horses ran at Turfway Park, won by three-fourths of a length, one last time out by nearly six lengths. Uh, you know, you look at the effort. Uh, efforts that you know they've all been here as you've touched on it's also important to have you know local works here so i just think joker on jack is you know one of maybe even the only horse here with good experience at this track and has performed well here clearly likes this track i get that the gate could be a concern but the figures certainly fit and again we touched on it. In these weaker races if you can find a horse that's fast and can also show the ability to actually hang on with that speed against other horses that likely can't pass all that well and don't have strong figures again i mean you look other than the debut and the horse has been bet down, by the way, in every race. But other than the debut, has put up strong enough figures to be competitive enough, competitive enough to win this race. And certainly like the 6-1 value. I mean, again, you'll find value just about anywhere. But uh, again, for a race that I went deep in, it's hard to look at a horse like Joker on Jack that's that talented and for this field and not put the horse on your ticket. Guys, based on the fact that this horse has been off for a while, has a ridiculously fast bullet work, I always take those a little bit with a grain of salt. Like, I don't know how much the horse was being asked. It says breezing. We don't really know. The fact that this horse has got a lot of speed and is the outside, this horse is going. Like, this is an absolute pure Agreed. scent. I, I would be shocked that this horse is not scent. And this is one of the reasons why I like my top pick. So the one doesn't have to have the lead, but I think the one's going to go from the inside, in my opinion. The two, by the way, is not slow either. I think the two is going to go a little bit. Uh, the There's another. The, the five has got a little bit early speed. Uh, there is some other speed in here, if I recall. The eight is definitely going, right, guys? It looks like the eight's going to be going for sure. Here's my opinion. This has to be a fast pace, or at least an honest pace. I'm going to take a stand here, guys, and you'll see on my pick five. I think the nine is the class, is the best closer, is going to get a great setup. I love the nine here. Global sensation. Obviously, you guys like the nine also. You've got this horse in the money. But I have this horse on top. Uh, I love Stidham. Declan Cannon's a solid jock. I know this horse is 7-2. Again, it's not the most creative pick, but this is the best closer. This horse has been competing against Tougher. Uh, this horse has been working at Turfway. I think he's going to let the speed go. I think he's going to be a big, wide, sweeping move and blow by the field uh, and win this race. This is not the strongest Godolphin horse that they have uh, in, in their uh, ownership, but I really like the 9 quite a bit. No, you like the 9 too also. You have him in second. Yeah, he's probably the most logical in here. Um, to me, he he wasn't one that, in terms of closers, had a, a super strong kick and, and two back. I feel like he, he kind of got the perfect trip. Yeah. Um, but, you know, from a, from a class standpoint, uh, and a horse that's already won at Turfway, and you can see popped an 85 uh, his first time. Granted, that was going a mile and a quarter, um, but definitely a use for sure. 
Yeah, I, I don't think we need to talk too much longer, guys. I think, you know, I, I think pace is going to play a big factor in this race. If Perry Utes wins on the one, not only will I tip my tap to uh, my cap to you guys, I'll I'll tip my cap to uh, Perry Utes. I mean, that'd be that would be incredible. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the one as a C out of respect to you guys. And the horse is a three year old and can improve. I and just, for the legend I'm, jockey, you got to six. You got to stick with them. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the pace in error, guys. I don't know if the one can close from uh, several back, and that's just the way I read it. I might be completely, you know, over-reading the pace situation, but I think that's really going to hurt the one. Uh, but I'll use the one defensively. Let's go on to race eight, because the last two races, guys, are higher quality and nice races here as I go ahead and bring up the banner for race eight, and I also bring up the field. This is uh, allowance optional claiming 25. They're sprinting going six and a half. It is for the Philly and mares. Of course, it's a huge field. You see right there. The more line favorite is the number five forgotten piece and Oklahoma bred who is in for the 25. And I don't know how much you guys, how much it matters to you guys, but it does matter to me a little bit. There's only four horses, the two, four, five, and six are in for the 25. The others are not because they've passed their conditions and etc. Uh, no, uh, Charlie, I'm going to go to you first. Charlie and Noah both have the 10. I've got the 10 in second. Our Dotsy for Vicky Oliver, Fernanda Della Cruz. Uh, what do you like about the 10, Charlie? Yeah, you know, for me, even though this is higher quality, I still don't think there's any horse in this field that has done and done enough and it's competitive enough to single or go that skinny. But for me, our Dotsy personally was the top, was the clear cut top horse. Uh, I understand the works aren't anything crazy but they also aren't bad the horse is consistent really hasn't had a bad race to date uh i also like you know the horse isn't crazy experienced so certainly she has a lot of you know time to grow and room for improvement has been kind of consistent with those you know high 60s low 70 figures but i think the horse can take another step forward had a really nice effort last time out at keeneland and a much at a pretty big allowance race um, and again, I also just like that, you know, you can kind of see this horse last time out set just off the lead. But you also look two back in the horse's second best effort and was four lengths off the lead and was pretty far back and was able to close up and get the win. So I love versatility. It's something I talk about all the time on Benton and Boosin is the importance of a horse with versatility. So, you know, you don't have to stress about it, as we touched on in the last race where there's a lot of horses that we talk about either need to go or would prefer to sit. Our Dotsie can kind of pick and choose and see how the race turns out. Uh, so I just love the versatility and the figures from this horse. So for me, it was just the safest pick in this race. Try a little surprised you didn't use the 11. <laughs> I mean, I like the name, but, you know, we're not here for picking names, unfortunately. No, we're not. Uh, no, this is the class of the field. And before I let you talk about this horse, something that I believe is true, and I think I could prove it to be true with stats, I much prefer horses coming out of turf races on the tapita than dirt races on the tapita. Turf horses in general can handle the tapita. It's not an absolute rule, but I prefer turf horses usually do better on tapita, at least more consistently based on the pun intended consistency of the track surface rather than dirt horses. Dirt horses can certainly run well on tapita, but turf horses are more likely to run well on the tapita. This is, for me, this is more of a class play, even though I have a sort of second. What's your thoughts on our Dotsy, Noah? Yeah, my angle with the 10 was uh, you look at the last two races, uh, going seven furlongs at Kentucky Downs. Uh, it's probably more like a mile. Uh, and then a mile on a 16th at Keeneland and was part of a hot pace. Uh, so the angle for me is kind of, uh, two routes to a sprint uh, should be fit uh, and won the career debut going five and a half. Uh, so I, I really think it's only, you know, nine, 10 in this race and, and pick a spot and move on. Yeah. I have nine, 10 also how deep I'm, how deep am I in the pick five? We'll find out. Um, just because I don't think there's a lot of speed in this race, guys, I'm going with the nine on top, no tapping out. Great name. If you're uh, a, a, a fan of, of certain sports, um, I like the last race guys a lot. I know it was only at, at Presque Isle, but one by four and was able to stalk and finish in a nice time of 109 and three, technically basically 109 and four. I also like the fact this horse has been at Surfway Park and has been working very well. I am slightly concerned about the distance guy. She's got to get the extra half furlong, but if she can get out there and rate off the five or perhaps just go to the lead, I think she's got a big shot. I don't see a lot of release speed in this race. We need to talk about Forgotten Peace, who 
is more consistent, guys. But and Noah, you have this horse in third. Charlie you got it in second. My concern is this is a seven-year-old. You know what she is? She's in for twenty-five. I don't really like the upside there. Um, she is also coming out of Presque Isle. It just feels to me like the nine has more upside and is a better horse. But if they duel, it's going to really set up nicely for the eleven, Charlie, for the ten, Charlie. I would think. Yeah, and that's kind of exactly how I see this race going, as you were talking about. I think the five and nine, you know, they put up similar figures, ran same distance, same track. So I think those two will kind of hook on with each other. Now, in terms of, you know, where they obviously are in the field with the five and nine, there's enough horses between them where there could be some other chaos where you have some of these other horses that maybe aren't as fast as them, but also might want to go. Like you kind of look at the six, I won't say necessarily wants to go, but it will certainly be kind of up there a little bit and you know there's going to be other horses like the four who's right next to the five which is another horse i'll touch on real quickly that's certainly going to want to send uh so i think the pace could be not crazy hot like the one we talked about earlier but certainly contest enough to set up for the 10 but look forgotten piece as you touched on certainly an older horse but a very consistent horse which again i like to see still working forwardly which again is something again you like to see for a horse that is getting older that the horse still looks sharp look will forgotten piece win Maybe not. Certainly for me, when we get to our tickets, was good enough that I couldn't leave the horse off. Do I like three to one for a seven-year-old? Not really. Like if I was playing this race on my own, I would certainly look for other horses for value. But again, as you touched on, the horses show the ability to sit just behind the leaders and hang in there. Can the horse actually finish the job and win? That remains to be seen, but you do have to give credit that the horse has ran 29 times and has 10 wins in nine second places, five thirds. So the horse certainly is always in the money and competitive. Uh, but yeah, certainly a lot to like and also a lot to be concerned about. And then for the four, gosh, and again, just another horse that has put up decent figures. They're not quite as good as some others, but I like the value at eight to one. Certainly a little concerned that the horse is in for the claim. Uh, but again, a younger horse is a three-year-old, which I like. Um, and again, just as another horse who could send where you never know what's going to happen in these contested pace. But, you know, again, a horse that maybe could kind of, you see last time out, took that first step forward where instead of kind of getting to the lead and fading, was able to win going away. Uh, so, you know, maybe with another step forward could at least be competitive at eight to one. Yeah, it's an interesting race. To me, the whole race depends on the first 10 steps out of the gate and what the five and nine do. If the nine clears, I think the nine and the nine doesn't have to have a lead in my opinion, but if the nine, if the pace is a little bit softer and the nine is right there, I think she's got a, a big shot of not. I think the 10 is a very likely winner coming over the top guys. The last race is maybe the best race of the sequence. Actually, it's a really nice race, even though it's a main special, there's some nice horses in here. Let's go ahead and look at this field before I bring up the banners. Here's the field right here. This is the closeout leg of the pick five. It's a main special weight. I, again, it's for maiden two-year-old fillies. So it's a split division of the first leg, $70,000 purse. Again, a big field of 12. There's an also, there's an AE. That's a maker, Bernard Mosa, the number 13. There's a pretty good line favorite here. Actually, there's two horses that are going to take a ton of money. Number 10, Sierra Sky for Cassie and Corrales. And then number four, Egyptian Candy, who's the horse. Again, this is the horse that we, talked about earlier in the show that was the four horse in the replay coincidentally is the four horse again on wednesday um by, with leach and machado let me go ahead and show up the banners i have a pretty strong opinion here guys and and again i like to take some chances I'm, i have no problem taking chalks but i have reasons that i don't like both the four and the ten i could be wrong we'll talk about it no i'm gonna let you talk about the ten first sierra sky coming out of a Talk about a live race. The winner of the race that the 10 is coming out of um, just happened to win the damn a Breeders' Cup Juvenile uh, Philly turf. So let's talk about the 10 for Sierra Sky. That's your top pick, Noah. Yeah, it's it's a pretty soft top pick. Um, you know, going back to the Miss Grillo, obviously hard to justify. Came back and won in the Breeders' Cup. Um, but they ran, you know, more than 25 seconds to the second half, which was why I was a little bit against uh, hard to justify in the Breeders' Cup. Um, but I just think... Uh, Sierra Sky's uh, you know. the nine in this replay, everyone, as I show it, who's right here on the inside getting a pretty good trip. But it was a soft pace, and horses up front here is hard to justify the winner of the this race and the winner of the uh, juvenile uh, Philly turf. This race was sort of do dominated by by front runners in general. Again, here is the nine that you like. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can see she was inside, and then and then the ten uh, moves up a little bit on her. Uh, still getting a pretty good trip here, uh, pretty in hand. Um, and then you fast forward to the stretch. Uh, she is a little wide, uh, but like like we 
touched on the slow pace. Nobody's, you know, really moving other than the three. Um, for me, I just, you know, think, uh, with a, with a solid race like that, uh, and a horse that, you know, maybe could get some pace to run into this time. Uh, and you get, you know, last, uh, I think it was last meets leading jockey in, in Gerardo Corrales, uh, kind of, kind of a default for me. Look, she obviously can win. She'll probably be the favorite. Everyone loves to see, you know, horses coming out of grade two. Noah, let, let's look at it realistically. Uh, and she's been training um, at Keelan. I have two concerns, and I want you to comment first, then we'll let Charlie comment. Concern number one is I don't think she did any running that race. I mean, I realize it's much tougher field. I get it. She didn't really show any kind of clothes, number one. Number two, no, I don't like the work pattern here. She she worked a bullet on October 19th, and I sort of feel like maybe they were getting ready for a race at the end of the Keeneland meet. At least it feels that way, Noah. And then she just didn't work for like four weeks. It's just she didn't do a lot of running the last race, and then this break, I might be overthinking it. I don't know. I Any, any, any validity, do you think either one of those concerns, Noah, in your opinion? Yeah, I think there's some validity there. Um, it's interesting to see, you know, she wasn't working all that fast up until that October 19th. So, yeah, uh, you know, they they could be they could have been, you know, pressing pretty hard on her in that work. Um, but then again, to your point, maybe they would have had one a, a week later if they were a point. Yeah, like the spot. pressing up to not have her work for four weeks. It's yeah, just, I, I do like they worked too hard. Maybe she got yeah. tired from that work. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's just I do. Weird to me, no, it's weird. I don't know. Yeah, I will say I do like the fact that the the November 11th work was at Turfway. Yes, uh, I do like just that. because it it seems like horses that have worked there, you know, do pretty well. And it was a very and it was a good work, at least by the number. I mean, I didn't mm -hmm. see the work, but anyway, I think the ten is interesting. I, I'm going to try to beat the ten. The ten obviously can win the race. Charlie, I'll let you just quickly talk about your thoughts on the ten. You just heard some positive and negatives. You have the source second, the ten. Yeah, I mean, Noah's covered, and so have you kind of exactly what I liked about the horse. I mean, look, he's clearly run against better fields by a country mile than anyone else in this race, even though obviously we talked about the the race the four ran in was certainly competitive, but nothing like the grade two where you then have hard to justify in it. Uh, the one thing I will say to counter, and again, the work's kind of interesting, but I do like that the horse ran a turf way. But the one thing I do like is I get that the horse didn't do all that much running, but at the end of the day, on the debut – uh, obviously, Sierra Sky was too far back, but goes from 12 lengths to less than a length at, by the end of it. So I get that the pace is hot. I completely understand that. But for me, it just shows the horse has shown some ability to run. There's certainly a lot of question marks in this field. I think the fact that, you know, Mark Cassie, who's one of the best trainers in, in the world, had the competence to send this horse to a grade two after, again, you have to realize – for a Mark Cassie horse to go off at nearly 11 to 1 on debut was normally a red flag because his horses always take, usually take money. So the fact that the horse was at those odds and that on top of that runs big and he says this isn't just some sort of fluke or a, like the race worked out, but I think this horse can then go into a grade two. I just see a lot of belief in the horse in a field where there's a lot of question marks and it's just one of those horses that is hard to leave off your ticket and hard to not put in your top three. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm using her. I just don't like her at seven to five and i think a lot of people are going to single this horse guys at the end of the pick five too just to sort of a gut feeling so i think there's a lot of value being this horse her first race guys i watched the replay like twice that race just sort of fell apart it came back slow the horses coming out of that race have not done very well i just i don't know i'm either gonna be very right or very wrong about sierra sky i think she'll run well i just don't like her on the win end let's talk about what we do like egyptian candy we're not gonna show the replay charlie we just showed the last the replay earlier in the card saved ground ran very well was 27 to one uh 27 to one in that race but if she can run anywhere near that last race she obviously is a huge threat yeah for me i mean this was my obviously my top pick again i think and we'll get to the ticket it's a two-horse race honestly i wanted to single egyptian candy i personally liked a lot what i saw in the replay the odds don't phase me i think the horse had a nice trip at great execution it should certainly take another step forward second time out ultimately again the concern was just the class of the 10 and how much more difficult the races have been and it's hard to not respect the horse to at least do something but i think there's just less red flags with egyptian candy i get the odds are concerned but look this horse will be closer up on the pace than the time by a lot doesn't necessarily really need a, a pace breakdown or a lot to go the right way. I think Egyptian candy you probably won't get more than three to one. But look, if you're getting Egyptian candy at five to two, three to one ish and versus the ten at five six to five, even money seven to five. And again, I mean the trainer's not nearly as well known. The jockey's not 
all that well known. You, it's very reasonable that people are going to see more to like be more hesitant to bet on this horse. I would much rather bet this horse if I'm playing this race on its own. And again, for the sake of my ticket, obviously I would much rather hope this horse gets home because I think that you could make an argument that the four is maybe the safest bet in this race and you'll get more value. I think Egyptian Candy ran in a decent field. I think, again, executed a great trip. And, you know, a trip like that this time out certainly I think would fit and the distance isn't any sort of concern for me either. I wrote down some on Sierra Sky. I don't mean to backtrack, but guys, the, the maiden race that Kentucky Downs for Sierra Sky, the first, fourth, fifth and sixth place finishers all regressed with their buyers substantially in their next race. Just want to bring that up. Um, Egyptian candy. Here's a stack guys. You ready for this? The trainer first out two for 14. I mean, not great, but whatever. 43% of the money. That's pretty darn good. Right. For this trainer. Second time out. Oh, for 10, 20% in the money. Thoughts. You guys are math I mean, guys. look, obviously that's not that. I mean, it doesn't take a, a mathematician or a genius enough to be a math teacher like Howard to know that over 10 is not the exact number you'd be looking for. I Small will say, I don't think, size, but, I don't think 20% is anything that to get upset about again no. for a less known trainer. I don't think 20% of the money is anything that bad. I think a lot of trainers would take that. And again, I mean, yeah, 0 for 10 is not ideal, but again, it's a small number. The horse, again, in my opinion, ran a very solid effort and I think shows enough to be competitive in this field. Again, I understand the two to one isn't exciting, but I think you'll get a lot more than two to one because I think the 10 is just going to get destroyed. I mean, we'll have to see what happens. Look, yeah. if the 10 doesn't take as yeah. much money as we think, then I think it only makes the fours case stronger because the 10 in theory should get hammered at the board, but we have to wait and see what happens. But I am curious, I think, Howard, what you think about the five because I didn't, I don't know about Noah, but this is not a horse <laughs> I looked at. I was like, oh, boy. I'm a chromie, baby. I'm a chromie, baby, Noah. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, I think the 10 is seven to five. I think the four is five to two. That's my prediction. Uh, and I, I again, on the four, before I go to the five guys and we'll end the show with our pick five tickets, the four, after running huge, hasn't worked didn't work in like almost three weeks and worked very slow it it feels to me i've got the four second and the four can absolutely win guys absolutely win it just feels like they had this horse cranked up for uh her first start it may not be as good second time out that's my opinion now let's talk about the five guys tazawako tazawako first of all japanese bread because chrome is in japan that's why um we we know california chrome guys was was a an uh, amazing horse and one on synthetic and on uh turf too. Michael Maker, right? Now, you know how much I love zero buyers, as as Pete Visco makes fun of me that. The horse, the race was supposed to be on turf, right, guys? It was scratched off. I think they just figured, okay, you know what? We're just run the we're just gonna run the horse anyway in the slop. Obviously, guys didn't handle the slop at all. But here's the thing: the horse was six to one that day, even though she didn't handle the slop at all. Look at the works, guys. This is a Michael Maker trained horse. The dam won $600,000. We know California Chrome. She was working really well at, tur guys, guess where? At Turfway, right? She was working well. I see a minute three. I see a minute one breezing, or sorry, a minute one fifth out of the gate. Third best of 43. Um, came out of that race. Another two, you know, this is a maintenance work, the last one, guys, but the one on November 18th was a very good work for Michael Maker and a lot of real nice breeding. Guys, this horse, just toss out that debut. That debut means nothing to me. Asai is just wrapped up on the horse, guys, on the far turn. I watched the replay. So forget the Z. Like, it could have been a five buyer. It wouldn't have mattered. I'm a little bit against the four. I'm a little against the, the, the 10. And this horse is going to be a big price against these two in this race. I'm going with the five. Tazawako, I think you're going to see a major improvement for this horse. And I have a feeling she's got some talent. If she runs a 10 buyer and is up the track, obviously I'll be way wrong. There's too many things I like about this horse, guys, especially against two big chalks. No, am I crazy? Feel free to say yes. Uh, you could be right, but you also could be Tazawako. <laughs> <laughs> I could be. I think it's Waco, but who knows? That that's uh, Waco's better. That's fair. Charlie's like no is no is right. I, I could be Waco. <laughs> Look, if this if I'm alive in the pick five guys, and it's a big if. And if this horse wins, isn't this horse legitimately going to pay five or six times bigger than the four of the ten? Yeah. At least, You're probably right? getting ten to twelve to one on this horse. I mean, unless everybody sees the same thing as you that it's a maker and you know just got unfortunate <laughs> bet. Then yeah, maybe this horse gets bet down to five six to one. But yeah, I mean, look I for me. 
and Noah, I think we both kind of wanted to look elsewhere. I know <laughs> I, I do like who Noah liked with Dappled Lady. I was between the seven actually and the one it's satisfactual for who I'd thrown because I want to throw in a first. Wow. And I will I will apologize because I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because I always say I'm betting in booze and I hate betting first time starters on the rail. And yet I put it satisfactual as my third pick. I just couldn't ignore the works. I mean, the horse certainly wasn't cheap. And the fact that the horse is, yeah. I get that it's a Keeneland, but a 48 and two, 49 and one, 49 three, the horse is working forwardly. And look, again, I don't love the fact that the horse is on the rail. I don't have the horse on my ticket, but at 12 to one, you could find a lot worse in this field for that kind of value for a horse that, again, we don't know what's going to happen. Florida bread and the seven, by the way, is a half to pixelate who won 1.2 million on the turf. Maybe mm -hmm. you guys remember hearing about that horse pixelate was a knife turf, a knife, a nice turf horse. Uh, the seven dappled lady Godolphin Stidham. There's a lot of ways you can go. It, it sure feels like guys, it's going to be the four, the 10. I'm going with a fuzzy with the five. Maybe the first years can run as if this uh, sequence isn't tough enough. Guys, let's quickly go to our pick five tickets. I mean, rambled on a little longer than I wanted. Completely my fault. No, let's go to your ticket. You've got three, eight, nine with two, 10 with one, four, eight, nine, 12 with nine, 10 with four, seven, 10, 90 bucks. Real quick, know your thoughts here on the ticket. Yeah, on the first leg, uh, kind of praying I get through with 389. Uh, I had the 12 kind of as my fourth uh, with, with the outside post, uh, and I believe that race is a mile, so it definitely going to be a, a, a quick run in the first turn, so I yeah. ultimately didn't up, end up using the 12. Uh, in the second leg, uh, the maiden five, very eventful. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to try and just go 210, uh, see if I can beat the warden there. Uh, oh, the no Wesley. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know. I know Charlie's really hurt by that one. Uh, and the third leg was was kind of my spread leg. I had the one on top. Uh, I've got uh, Howard's nine that he likes. Uh, the horse I had in third was the four, who I thought was a little interesting. Uh, Gerardo Corrales hops on, uh, and it, for a really no name uh, trainer who's seems to be you know hitting at thirty something percent, and, and she's you know forty four percent in in claiming races. Uh, and the horse got a bullet last time at Mountaineer. I don't, maybe I'm looking, you know, too far into it, but in a, in a wide open race like that, you know, a horse that could have some potential, uh, in the fourth race, like I said, when I was talking about it, I, I thought it was pretty much nine, 10. I did look at the, the five, the seven year old. Uh, I also, in that race, there's a horse, the two for maker who I am completely against and neither of you had in the top three. So I, I must be thinking, right. Uh, but this is a, a maker who he claimed for 32, two back, and then is in for 25 now, which I, I think is going to take money, and I don't like the horse. Yeah. Uh, and then in the last leg, uh, I've got the two logicals, the four and the 10, and then the seven that you quickly mentioned um, yeah. is kind of a, you know, a board horse. If this horse is, you know, five or six to one, I think she's got a shot. Uh, but if she's, you know, 10 or 12 to one, I don't, I don't really know if she can run. But that's that's kind of my thinking there. All right, Charlie, let's go to your ticket. By the way, as we're filming this live on Monday night, you're not missing anything. It's a boring, boring 3-3 game at halftime. Both teams suck. Let's go on. Sorry, Minnesota fans. Bears fans, we already know they suck. Hey, let's go on. Them. Let's go on to Charlie's ticket. 3-7-9-12 with 7, with 1-2-3-5-9-12, with 4-5-9-10, with 410 96 bucks you are sticking with your guy wesley ward with a five-year-old mare and maiden five claimer who easily could wire the field there's no doubt about it if, if she's if she's remotely any good at all yeah and that was my angle you know in the first race kind of stuck with the top three that i gave out and then i touched on at the end that i also thought for scene could be interesting you know we kind of talked about how i think sedately could certainly take a step forward uh butterfly uh, Butterfly Queen obviously makes a ton of sense for Michael Maker. And then we talked about you like Everlyn, and I agree with what we saw in the replay. The horse has a lot of potential. Race six, again, I talked about, I think it's a race where it's a bunch of wrong answers. And the one that's the least wrong for me happens to be the Wesley Ward. I'm going to take a chance on the five-year-old first-time starter who's working forwardly in hopes that the horse can just wire a bunch of other horses that don't want to go. And yes, the horse might end up needing to, uh, you know, might have a little asthma attack, might not be able to get all the way and start wheezing as we get in the stretch. But I'm kind of hoping all the other horses are wheezing along too and just want this race to be over as soon as possible uh you know in race seven talked about it this race is wide open hoping the uh you know the 69 year old jockey and supreme song can build off the back-to-back -back best figure and go win but in case there's not i'm making sure i have more than enough coverage you know a lot of those people who watch me know i like to do the budget college ticket but here i just had to spend the two as you talked up uh with victor lebron who actually normally rides at gulfstream um 
this horse is another one you had talked about with all the speed in the race that can send. And with horses like this where they're not that good, it's always good to have those other horses that can send in case nobody could pass. Uh, I added three double-digit odd horses and the two at 12 to 1, the three job security at 10 to 1 who's coming off of a win. Uh, just another horse with solid figures. And then the five in document or in documentado, who again is another one that just, you know, was running really well at this level, had a win on a solid second place, and then tried to move it all the way up to optional claiming 40,000. Why? I don't know, considering the horse at 15,000 optional was 43 to 1. And they said, you know what, let's go to four times that and go to 87 to 1. And the horse obviously did no running. So I think this is a much more reasonable level. Uh, and then in terms of uh, the other horses, I have obviously the logical ones with the nine who should win this race. But again, it's wide open. And then again, I talked about how talented I think Joker on Jack is one that will certainly have to send but likes this track. Uh, moving on to race eight. Again, this is the one that uh, I also think is kind of open. I know I threw the four on as a long shot. And then you have the more logical contenders where I think this race will set up for the 10. But you also have the five and nine with the seven year old. They're going to be sending together. Um, so we'll see what kind of happens with the pace in that race. And then in the last leg, again, the four and the 10 are the obvious contenders. Not going to throw in the one, even though I like the horse on debut. I just can't put a rail horse in there and don't want to make yeah. my ticket any more expensive. Wanted to single the four, but the 10 just been in too competitive of races to leave off my ticket. I mean, you got to take stand somewhere. Let's go with my uh, great analysis there, Charlie. Here's my ticket. My I'm going three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Few with horses, seven, man. ten, eleven. With singling the nine in leg three. With five, nine, ten. With four, five, ten. It's an unusual ninety-four dollar and fifty cent ticket. Not the uh, increment that I usually throw out there guys my general opinion the first race i have no idea it, it's complete spread to me um the third i've been going 7 10 11, uh, 11 using the war just hoping to survive i'm very worried about the two noah i might make some adjustments and throw well i play abc tickets as you guys know so although you can't do abc direct uh, it's a nightmare anyway I mean, you can't i'd have to punch in 20 tickets i might have to throw the two and like two and figure out something because the two worries me to, to beat me in that race guys i just think the nine's the best horse in the race and you got to take a stand and that's a separator because the nine's going to be what four to one right seven to two if i can get if i can get through that race i've got a monster shot i'm going five nine ten in race eight and then i'll go the two obviouses and the, my top choice i think the five who may be a wacko or a wacko whatever i'm absolutely fascinated with this horse and if this horse is five to one or more uh if the horse is 12 to one uh that horse is probably dead on the board but if the horse is between like five to one and eight to one this is a perfect reverse uh key trifecta back wheel kind of horse you know using the four and ten on top maybe using the one and seven some kind of combo try guys i think that five is absolutely fascinating in the last race uh guys we're going to wrap it up i really appreciate it. let me just show up bring up the closing banners really appreciate you guys coming on uh, tonight for what should be a really fun se sequence at Turfway Park on opening day, excuse me, opening night on Wednesday. So for my co-host, No Maher, Charlie Freeman, this has been your host, Howard Kravitz, episode 313 of the HHH Racing Podcast. Guys, should we say it together? Three words, are you ready? One, two, three. Crush, Crush your, your best. best at Turfway Park Wednesday night. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.